when you were a kid, did anybody in here dream of being a superhero? No, just me. All right. All right. So when I was a kid, this is this is real for me. I did dream of being a superhero. I was a big fan of Superman. All right. So he was like, he was a cool thing when I was a kid. But if I'm honest with you, there are still moments today where I think that I could be a superhero. Now, I don't know about you guys, but Batman is just a regular guy with a cool suit and some fancy gadgets. All right. I think that I could do the things that Batman does. <laughs> so most of you disagree with me. I could tell that from what's going on out there. My daughter has, uh, me and my daughter have been watching the Marvel movies. You guys fans of those, right? Um, and so we've been kind of going through those slowly. We're towards the beginning, but we can kind of watch them in timeline. Um, and so she's kind of into those type of things. And so um, one of the first ones that we watched was Captain Marvel. I don't know if you've seen this yet, but this is a picture of Captain Marvel, all right? We watched this movie together, and she loved it. She loved Captain Marvel, partly probably because, you know, she is a pretty sick female, and she does a lot of cool stuff in that movie, but also, I think, because she is one of the most powerful superheroes that, the, that there is, one of the, the energy and the force and the speed and all of that that she possesses, which she's just kind of a big deal. But if you have seen Captain Marvel, you know that she also has a weakness, right? She has weakness as well. She, for most of her life or most of her time as Captain Marvel, she didn't know who she was. She didn't know her history. She didn't know anything about her. Her memory had been lost and she has lost this understanding of her life when she was known as Carol Danvers, like a regular, ordinary, normal person. And because she didn't know who she was or her past or where she came from or, or any of that stuff, she didn't really understand completely what she was capable of. And you'll see that on play if you've ever seen the movie. Understanding your origin story is important. Your backstory, the plot behind your life. All of us have something along those lines. Understanding where you came from. To really understand you, you have to know your origin story. And I want you to think about this as we get started. Do you ever look around the world, the world around us, and wish that you could change things? Just think about that for a second. Do you ever look at the world and you know, watch the news or th see things on social media and just see how the world is and you just wish, man, if I could, if I could do something, I would, I would change this. I would fix this. I would bring about change in this area of our, our world or my life. I, if I were to guess, I think that most of us feel that on some level, right? We, we, we feel that. We, we see things wrong in the world. We wish that we could do something. We wish that we could eradicate it or fix certain things. But if you're like me, most of the time you think, well, I can't really do anything, right? I can't fix it all. I can't, I can't be the one that, that gets rid of that or, or erases that or makes everybody think this way. I can't do that. And we often limit ourselves into believing that we aren't capable of actually bringing about real change or a real difference or seeking justice in our world. I want to show you something tonight. Then I think that if we were to understand about ourselves, because this is all of our stories, then maybe, just maybe, we could be a little bit more like a hero that brought about change and difference and justice in our world. It comes from the very beginning of the Bible. And in Genesis chapter 1, we, and you know the story, so I'm not going to like iron this out, but in the beginning of time, God created everything. And in Genesis chapter 1, when God created man, we learn this. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 27, it says, Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And so the backstory, the origin story for all of us, for every single person, is that, that we were made in the image of God. We all bear God's likeness. We all resemble our creator. You are made in God's image. This is your origin story. This is mine. This is yours. And this is foundational. This may sound so simple that you're like, Matt, what, this doesn't make a difference for me. But it does. Anybody in here feel like they look like their parents? 
It's okay. You can, even if you're ashamed of it, right? You know, some of us feel like, you know, you can see the similarities between a, a, a parent and a child, oftentimes. Not always, right? Oftentimes you can see those things. That develops, I think, more over time. The older you get, the more you find yourself maybe looking like your mom or looking like your dad. Let me show you a picture uh, of my dad so you can see kind of what that looks like. This is a picture of my dad. And so you... Oh, yeah. Well, so, okay. I, I forgot I put that up there. I'm not, that's Mark Wahlberg. There's a lot of people that say that we do look alike. So I was going to kind of show you that. Okay, right on. So you guys can't see the resemblance there. Okay. Here is a picture of me and my dad. This was taken about a year ago. And so you can kind of see the resemblance of that we look like each other. And if I were to show you a picture of my dad and his dad, you would definitely see the resemblance. And, and you often, you could take it off there now. Okay. So you can often see the resemblance between a parent and a child. But here's the, here's the truth. We bear a resemblance to God. We are made in his image. There are parts of us that are very much like God. But here's the deal for all of us. We spend a lot of time focusing on the things that we don't like about ourselves. How we look or how we talk or how tall we are or or, or, or what we're good at. We know what we don't like about ourselves. In fact, we probably could make a pretty long list of the things that we, don't, that we wish were different about us or about our lives or whatever it is. And that's really unfortunate. Because the truth is that, of course, you're not perfect. None of us are perfect. The truth is that all of us, every single one of us, are created in the image of God. That means that you have value that can't be taken away from you. You have value in, in, in recognizing that you bear a resemblance to the Creator God. And nothing anyone says, nothing that anyone ever does to you in your life can take that away from you. You are made in the image of God. You are special above all other creations. The things that you love, the things that you care about, the things that you're passionate about, all of those things, resemble God. And they are clues into how God has made you and his purpose for you in this world. We have to believe and understand this truth that we are made in his image. It sounds so simple, but it actually should make a pretty big difference in how we live our lives. Paul said this in Colossians chapter one. He says, the son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for in him, talking about Christ, all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. This talks and shows us the supremacy of Christ and just how important he is. But then this truth is that we understand we are made in God's image, right? But Jesus is the actual image of of God in the flesh. That's, that's why it's so important that we, we try to imitate Christ. We are seeing a perfect image of what God looks like, not the physical features and not the eye color or whatever that is. I'm talking about the characteristics, the integrity, the value that's inside of a person was all perfected and on display in Jesus. That's why we imitate him. But Paul doesn't stop there. He goes on and talks further in the next chapter. He writes this. It's a little lengthy, but just follow along. It's on the screen. Colossians chapter 2 says this. So then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, that's all of us, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, Christ, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. In Jesus, everything that is the image of God is on display in Christ. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him, you were also circumcised with the circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Check this. 
when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and then condemned us. He's taken it away, nailed it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. There's a couple of key elements in there. I know that was a long passage that I want you to see. Number one, Jesus is the complete image of God. In Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in Jesus. But number two, when you follow Christ, when you make him a part of your life, when he is your Lord, this is what it says, God makes you alive with Jesus. Something supernatural happens when you make Jesus the Lord of your life. Your identities are transformed. You go from death to life, from old to new. Jesus actually, if you think about it, changes everything in your life. It doesn't make, mean he makes your life easy. It's not, that's not what it is. No one ever said that, but he brings newness, completeness into your life. Think of this. We started talking about Captain Marvel at the beginning of this, right? Here's a picture of Carol Danvers. And so this is her character uh, before she actually became Captain Marvel. And as Carol Danvers was just a normal person. And she was a pilot. She, she was a nice person, you know, v- lived a very caring life. But in the movie, we get a glimpse into when she transformed from Carol into something else, right? And this was a significant moment. She was on this aircraft that crashed and she absorbs this supernatural energy that transforms her DNA and gives her her superpowers. I want to show you this clip. Check it out. All right, so if you haven't seen that movie, maybe that will entice you a little bit to check it out. But here's the deal. From this moment on, Carol Danvers was not just Carol Danvers. She had a supernatural power inside of her, something that, was, that was, wasn't human and enabled her to do incredible things. And here's what I want all of us to understand. When Jesus becomes the central part of your life, when, when he becomes your Lord, when you allow the Holy Spirit to be living inside of you, you are transformed and made into something new. You have something inside of you that is supernatural, that is different, that enables you to live differently, making us more like the image of God that we were made in. But there's two things I want you to understand tonight. Number one is this, is that you have to embrace who you are. That means you embrace the reality that God made you in his image. And here's the, here's the other part about this. He made you how he wanted to make you. With your talents, with your gifts, with your passions, with the things that you're good at, with the things that you're not good at. God made you how he wanted you. And so many of us are caught up on the things that we're not good at or how we'd like to be different. But God made you how he wants you to be. You have to embrace who you are. You are valuable. You bring something to the table, not only for God, but also to this world. This moment in the movie was a flashback in in Carol's mind, helping her realize her identity and who she was. When, When she understood who she was, she understood her story, her origin story, where she came from, how she became the Captain Marvel that we know and see and and who she is, when she understood that, it changed everything and helped her understand how she should live, who she should care about, and the things that she'd be fighting for. Truth is, to embrace who you are, to understand that you were made in God's image. I know as teenagers, that's not truth you always believe. It's not truth that you always see, but I want you to know tonight that God made you how he wants you. You have a purpose. He has a plan for you. Embrace how God made you, and I promise you, when you do this, your relationship with God will be so much more comfortable recognizing that who you are is exactly how God made you. But there's something else, is that you have to embrace who you could be. All right? And these may sound pretty different, and they are, and that actually means that you embrace the Spirit of God living inside of you and how it should change you. Much like the force that absorbed into Captain Marvel you have a force inside of you, the Holy Spirit, 
that is ready to help you to make a difference in this world once you understand your backstory. If you were here with us this summer for the one thing that we did in this summer, if you're here for our Move At event, you remember we focused on the theme, the third person, focusing on this idea that there's a third person, there's a third part of, of the Godhead that is important, Father, Son, Spirit. And when you embrace the Holy Spirit, recognizing that it can make a drastic difference in your life, you allow the Spirit to guide you. It's a driving force that makes you live in a closer relationship with God. It is like a superpower that is available to you. Not that you can shoot light beams out of your hand or set things on fire, but it enables you to live differently than anybody else. Something that I think if we were to look closely at people in the Old Testament, Moses, Joshua, Gideon, David, all these people that we look at and say, man, look at their great faith, look what they did. They didn't have available to them what we do. We have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit living inside of us, changing how we think and changing how we behave. It's something that we should all consider. So what should we do with this? I, I want to close by just giving you this idea. If you're to embrace who God made you to be, if you're to embrace the Spirit living inside of you, I want you to look for what your mission could be. What could your hero mission be? What's something, and all of us need to figure this out, what's something that stirs you up? When you look around the world, when you look at the things that are happening, when you look at your school, maybe even your family, what stirs you up and you say, I'd like for that to be different. I'd like to make a difference there. I would like... I would like for this to change. Maybe that's a clue into how God has made you, how he has wired you, how he has created you to make a difference in this world. Jesus was a hero, not because he did anything supernatural, although he did, but he was a hero because he cared for people and he loved people. It was drastic, and I think all of us can make that difference. The bottom line is this, is that heroes embrace who God made them to be. And when you do this, when you embrace that you were made in his image, that you have value, and that because of the spirit living inside of you, you can change this world, then that's exactly what you could do. But you have to embrace how God has made you and what he has enabled you to do. And when we do that, each of us, individually and collectively, can make a huge difference.